It's Keith, I'm back in the UK. And somebody's bought me a cup saying, uh, yeah, it's Keith. I know I always talk about the weather. It was interesting seeing the UK Prime Minister, Keir Starmer, and his, his speech, and the first, he was talking about the weather. And quite rightly, he's British, I'm British, and we always talk about the weather. Uh, so it is, it's horrible. It's raining, it's absolutely belting down. I'm going to talk about how the inverter works um, a little bit, very simple, simplicity, because not everybody understands what's going on and that. So I've got this whiteboard, I'm in our meeting room here in, uh, in Liverpool, um, the home of several, uh, the Beatles and of course the best football team in the world. Some of you will argue, but uh, as I'm a, I'm a Liverpool fan, um, we've got a couple of football teams, but I'm not going to mention the others. So, uh, I'll talk about how the inverter works. One of the most important things about the inverter is we have a number of buses. So let me draw the, the inverter. This is an inverter here. This is what we've got here. So we've got here is the AC side. Here's the DC side. From the AC side, we connect to an AC bus. And this is the AC bus. On the DC side, we connect to the DC bus. And the inverter is in the middle. So it's a single bus. What do we connect onto this? Well, of course, we've got our essential load and the load goes through a relay and we're here, we've got our load. Oh, my writing is terrible. So we've got the load. We've also got an auxiliary. This also connects to it. Now I connect here and I put my auxiliary or my gen set. It's in parallel. See, it's in parallel. Relay closes, it's in parallel. Here, we've got the grid. This is our grid. This also has a another relay here and this is the grid so what happens to the grid the grid will then connect if i've got my fuse box my uh my consumer unit and i've got lots of fuses in it okay i've got the fuses here and then this this will then connect into a fuse onto the, onto the consumer unit out of the consumer unit will connect into a meter so i'll call it a watt meter and then out of there it will, uh, it will go, this is my, uh, the pylons, the wire, sh 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 and this connector here. And that's how, that's what connects that. That's my, that's my meter, that's my consumer unit, that's the grid. Now, one of the things we also had is on our non-essential load, we might have here, we might have our, our sockets. And we might have, um, I don't know, the, wash, uh, the, 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 the water geezer, hot water. Yeah, difficult to write with this board. I put hot, I used to talk with hot water. Lots and lots of things going on here. So this is the grid connection. What can sometimes happen is we could lose this, this pattern from here. There could be a failure, a brownout, a load shedding, outage. We lose that. Immediately that relay has to open. Now, what will be maybe happening is if the inverter is in a discharge, so what we've got going on, let's, let's just look a little, little bit what's going on on the, on the, on the DC bus. So look on the AC bus. So on the AC bus, I've got my load. I've got here. Here's my 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 my, uh, my AC bus. But let's look on the DC bus. What we got? What on the DC bus? Well, we've got our solar panel array. So let me draw our solar panels. So this is solar panels, and then we may have uh, two MPPTs. MPPT is like a little inverter to DC to DC converter. So here I'll draw in. This is one MPPT, here's two, and for some reason my thing is going multicolor. MPPT is a DC to DC converter, so the DC, 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 and these will uh, maybe connect in series, and these connect to here, and then these connect in series, here, here. So I've now got, I've got two DC to DC, and these now connect onto the bus. So these connect onto the DC bus. So I've got my, Two MPPTs here, MPPT, let's create this multicolour, MPPT, I always need to do something, I don't know what I'm doing, but it keeps changing colour. So I've got two MPPTs, um, I'm sure somebody will tell me what I'm doing wrong with this, um, this, this whiteboard, but I've got two MPPTs which are DC to DC converters and they go onto the DC bus. I've got my main inverter, this is the big inverter, that goes onto the DC bus. And also on the DC bus, I will have one more thing, the battery. So um, I'm not going to draw the similar battery. This part I'll just draw a battery in the old fashioned way. There's a battery and that connects the DC bus. And it might be uh, 50 volts. 
50 volt battery. So I've got my battery on here. So I've now on my DC bus, I've got my battery, I've got my main inverter, I've got my MPPTs, all sitting on the DC bus. And on the AC bus, I've got all the things going on in AC. So I've got two buses, that's what's inside the inverter. Now, there obviously is something else that controls the inverter and controls these relays, but I'm not gonna go into that, I'm just gonna talk about the basics. One of the things here I've got, before my meter, I put in a, a CT coil. CT coil. A CT coil is a little bit like the gateway. So if this relay is closed, this battery is now generating, so the power coming out of the battery, it's the inverse into the DC zone, and together with this, there could be some from the solar also coming in here, this flow in here, the power flow in here. So the power is going to flow here, it's going to flow here. Now, this relay will probably be closed and the power will flow into up here. This relay is closed and it will flow out into the socket, out into the socket. But it could also flow this way. It will flow every way. And it's flowing through my auxiliary if I've got there, and it might be my load, essential load. So it's flowing, the power's flowing. So what stops the power flowing back into the grid? Well, it's a CT coil that's not physically connected to it. So it works by voltage potential difference. So if the grid, for argument's sake, if the grid is 220 volts, okay, about 220 volts, and if this inverter is producing 225 volts, we're going to get a potential difference. This has got a greater potential to that. A little bit like water going, so this is bringing this up and it will flow and this will cause it to flow. And this will cause it to export. But if I match the voltage, 220 volt, 220 volt, by matching the voltage of the inverter and that's by adjusting. So inside the inverter, we adjust the voltage. So there's some sort of a dimmer switch. So, so this adjusts the voltage up or down. And by adjusting the voltage up or down, it controls whether we import or export. The CT coil, which connects into the inverter, detects that. And it detects it, and it detects when it's starting to flow out, it detects when it's flow. So it detects what's going on. And by detecting what you've set, so if you choose that inverter to export power, send it back to the grid if you want to, then you will set the voltage of the inverter slightly higher than the grid. And by adjusting that voltage ever so little and creating that potential difference will allow the fl flow. The greater the potential difference, the greater the flow of the energy. And by adjusting that, it cause it, by reducing it, will cause it to flow into the power. So what we would probably do in a lot of cases is if the inverter, for example, is say uh, 10, 10 kilowatt, so 10 kilowatt inverter, and we want to dish, we're producing enough on here, the inverter is 10 kilowatt, that means the inverter is taking the MPPT. So if, the, if, if we've got on here, if we've got 20 kilowatt or, 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 or whatever, I'm gonna overdrive it, and you, you wouldn't actually have another 10 kilowatt, but if we're overdriving it for argument's sake, because you can sometimes on some of the inverters, for example, on our small 3.5, we can put a seven kilowatt. So, but we've got a bigger array. Presume we've got a bigger array and we have inverter. So some of the energy, the inverter can only handle a certain amount, which will flow out if what, depending on what, but, but even if this is a 20 kilowatt inverter, but our demand is only, 20, is only 10 kilowatt, then the power will flow from here into the battery and through the other way. Right, now, this is what the problem is when the battery goes full. So when it is full, okay, the battery comes full. So you can't put any more power in here. So you do one or two things. You reduce the energy coming from the, 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 the MPPT, so you switch it off. So some people say, oh, it's a beautiful sunny day, but my thing's not producing any power because it has to stop the power because the batteries are full. You're not pulling it, you don't want to export it. What to do with the power? It can't do anything. So one of the nice things that we do with the, with the sun sink is we, we have an auxiliary, which we, we can then connect to a, another load. And in fact, a lot of our newer ones, we, we, can, put, we can switch things in and out. We can, we can be working your car charger or whatever. And we, have to dump, we can dump that power. It's a bit like on the, on the solar power, you have dump load. It's a bit different to a, a wind turbine where they have a dump load because a wind turbine and a dump load, they have to do it because to slow down the wind turbine because it's going too fast. So you probably have a dump load. On this, you, you don't but we use it because we want to use the energy because it's wasted, it's wasted energy. We don't want to export it back because we think, well, we might get nothing for it. Or in some countries, they might get charged for exporting it back. 
So we don't want, really want to export it back. So we use the auxiliary, we, we'll put this power maybe into a water geyser or uh, maybe into, uh, you, know, I don't know, you might put it into a cryptocurrency machine, make you some more money, I don't know what you want to do with it, but it will go into something. It may be going to heating, your hot water, to work your car, to work something. So that energy is used, and we, by simply we close that relay, and then this will then power whatever. And then when the battery, when the battery starts, when the battery starts dropping a little bit, then we will stop this. We can open this relay and start charging the battery. We we don't say if the pan, we, we work on a hysteresis thing. So if this the full power, the full, because it's on a DC bus, the full power will go into this. So we work as the battery as the panels come up or down. We look at the level of the battery where we'll close that relay. So if we say, well, the battery is, say, 100%, we'll close the relay. If it drops to 80%, we open the relay. The difference between 180 is called hysteresis. And it's the setting as hysteresis. It could be 90% and 85%. It could be whatever you want to set it to. Whatever you mean. But, but the delta is called hysteresis. That's actually how a hot water tank works. It works on hysteresis. It doesn't work on a dimmer switch. You know, some people like to make units that say, oh, we take all the solar panel and we put it in and the solar panel is producing 50 watts, but 50 watts into hot water, it's producing 100 plus 100. It doesn't really work that way. It, 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 it doesn't, because the resistance, the heat is different. When it's cold, it's, it, it's different. So we, we, work on, we work on the same way as a hot water work, the way things often work is, is on hysteresis. And by doing that, you get the full benefit here. And that's how it works. So you're seeing here, you have a common AC bus. Now, one of the things is people say, well, you know, the change over time. Uh, well, it hasn't got a change over relay. It's a common bus. There's no change over, there's something, don't use change over relays. We've got a grid relay that can open if we have a, if we, which is called islanding, that has to open. Because if we, if we lose power here, we have to detect there's a pressure from here, we have to detect there's no power, and suddenly we detect there's no AC coming in, we have to open that relay in, in a fraction of a fraction of a second, and then the unit's idling. But once that relay opens, the inverter is still running, it's not shut down, but it's now supplying the auxiliary there is, or supplying the load, it's continuing. That's a hybrid inverter, because it can do that, whereas a conventional string inverter, once, that's, once the grid's gone, the whole thing's shut down, that's it, the inverter's shut down. If we lose the grid, the inverter is still running. So we have to disconnect that. We have to disconnect it. When the power comes back on again, then the detection, we have a, we have, there's a relay, but there's also a detect circuit, okay? There's a circuit here, uh, I, put a det I call it detect circuit. And the detect circuit will detect suddenly, we've got the presence of AC. AC is present. And so the AC is present. We have to close that. But one thing you have to consider before we close that, this is running at a frequency. And this is AC that suddenly presence is running at a frequency. We have to align the frequency. So we have to shift, slightly shift the frequency of the inverter ever so slightly until this, the grid, and this is aligned. And once these are aligned, we can close that relay. If they're not aligned, we can't. And that's the reason why when you switch it on, there's a delay before it clicks. Because what the, relay, what the machine is doing is detecting to align the two frequencies together. And once it aligns, click, it can then close this relay and connect to the AC again. But without this alignment, and sometimes we can have a problem, is, is the it might never align. If this, if, if, this, if this grid coming out, if the frequency is too high, uh, maybe running generator, maybe running 48 hertz or 45 hertz, whatever, and the, the inverter's got a limit to say, uh, 49.5 hertz, it will never align. Another time is sometimes when you're using a generator and this connects on and suddenly it connects on and um, it loads the inverter and it, it throws the frequency out. So there's lots and lots of issues. And it's also when you're using on here, using you, 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 you put a, you're putting a generator on your auxiliary port. It's the same thing because the generator will be producing a frequency. The inverter has to lock into the generator frequency because you can't change the generator. So if I if I'm on the auxiliary and I've got a generator that's producing this, I can't change that because there's a diesel generator is going to produce it. So that I don't have the control of the generator, but I have the control of this. So this has to match this. And so so when you connect, it doesn't connect, doesn't connect because it can't sense a clean signal. The signal's not clean enough. 
And when this relay closes on my auxiliary, suddenly that generator is providing the load full power and the inverter will reverse because if it knows it's got a generator, the inverter goes from that to a, to a charge mode, it will reverse and start charging the batteries. So that generator has to be strong enough to power the charge circuits for the inverter and the load, power everything. So you have to be careful a little bit of choosing it. One thing you can do, and I can, I've explained in earlier videos how you can put the generator on the grid side, you've got a little bit more control because you've got CT coil. But I hope this very simple explanation works um, and how, how the actual inverter works. And, and sort of pointing out, you, the inverter is just one machine that's stuck in between two bus bars. So it's stuck in between an AC and a DC. And everything on the DC side is connected to DC, everything on the AC. There's obviously the inverter has a lot more things going on to it. There's a lot more control circuits, but principally, that's what it is. And the inverter goes both ways. It can charge or discharge. So it can send power from the AC to the DC side, or from the DC side to the AC side. And that's what the inverter does. That's the magic of it. It, it, chain, it takes power from either bus. So you've got two bus bars and it can move either way. And the MPPTs, well, they're just like little inverters. That's what, that's what they are, um, a DC to DC converter. Um, so I hope that's useful. Thanks for following us. Subscribe. Let me know if you want me to do more like this and explain more explainer videos. I hope you understand it. <laughs> you can read my writing, but I try to explain it the best I can. Thanks for following us. And it's still raining. See you later. Bye.